Stephen was King of England from December 1135 until his death in October 1154. He sat on the throne for roughly 19 years. Though he was one of William the Conqueror's grandsons, Stephen wasn't in line to become King of England and probably never expected to take such a role, most likely until he was approaching 30. When he was born in the early to mid 1090s, his uncle, King William II, sat on the English throne. William, who you can learn about in our previous video on him, would die childless and be succeeded by Stephen's other uncle, William's younger brother, Henry I. Henry I's son, William Adelin, was set to be the successor King of England, only in 1120 Adelin drowned, leaving the king with no heir. As we'll see, when King Henry died in 1135, opportunity would come knocking and it would be Stephen who answered the call. Let's take a look at where he fits in our timeline. He's here, crowned 69 years after the Norman invasion and 356 years before the birth of Henry VIII. Stephen's mother, Adela, was one of William the Conqueror's youngest children, thought to have been born in the wake of the Norman invasion of 1066. When she was still a teenager, she was married off to Stephen Henry, the Count of Blois in northern France. Stephen was born there and, as the third oldest male child, was never even expected to inherit his father's title, let alone the English crown. Henry I seized the throne in 1100 after the death of his brother William Rufus, and this set in motion a series of battles and skirmishes between himself and his older brother, Robert Curtos, who thought he had a right to the English throne. Out of her two brothers, Stephen's mother Mother Adela sided with Henry, to whom she was closest in age. As a result, Stephen was placed in Henry I's court, and the king became Stephen's benefactor and champion. Stephen even fought alongside the king and was knighted for his services in 1112 and gifted several royal titles. It's possible Henry was so kind to his nephew because he offered no threat. At that point, the succession of the king's son William Adeline seemed secure. On the night of the 25th of November 1120, though, history steered a new course. 17 year old William Adeline drowned making his way across the English Channel from Normandy, an event we covered in our previous video on Henry I. Stephen had actually been set to join William on the same ship, but just before he departed, he disembarked, either because he was in well or concerned about overcrowding. Suddenly, the King of England had no male heir. After trying and failing to produce another with his new wife, Henry I eventually nominated his daughter, the Empress Matilda, as his successor, and Stephen was one of those who took an oath to support her claim. When the King finally died in 1135, Stephen broke that oath and made his way to England, intent on claiming the throne. Though he was blocked from landing at Dover, he eventually made his way to London, where the citizens there declared him king. He then made his way to Winchester to secure the royal treasury, where again the citizens declared him king. Finally, he made his way to Westminster Abbey, where he was crowned 22 days after Henry I's death. Stephen's passage from a loyal nephew in the court of his uncle to King of England leaves an open question. How on earth did it happen? How did the relatively obscure fourth son of one of William the Conqueror's youngest daughters end up on the English throne? The answer seems to lie somewhere between good fortune and charm. By all accounts, Stephen was skilled at winning people over, whether they were low-born or high, and Henry I hadn't only acted as Stephen's patron, he'd also boosted the career of Stephen's younger brother Henry, who was made firstly Abbot of Glastonbury, then Bishop of Winchester. So when Stephen arrived in England to stake his claim, he was a popular candidate with more or less everyone he'd ever encountered, and crucially, he had the support of the church via his brother. Another factor in his favour was that Henry I's nominated successor, his daughter Matilda, was not a popular candidate. Not only was she a woman, but her marriage raised the unwelcome prospect of her husband, the Count of Anjou, sitting on the throne alongside her. King Stephen's relaxed, easygoing manner served him well when he was seeking power, but some historians think it became a hindrance once he actually obtained it. Soon after Henry I died in 1135, King David I of Scotland took the opportunity to invade England and overran Newcastle and Carlisle. Stephen marched north with a huge army, but instead of crushing David, he signed a peace treaty allowing him to keep Carlisle. It's likely the English barons were quite quietly perplexed. Stephen's reputation took a further battering over his treatment of Normandy. Instead of going into battle against Matilda's husband Geoffrey of Anjou, when the latter invaded the duchy, he paid him off. The message was clear. Stephen was a pushover. The new king soon found himself beset by problems. In 1138, David I of Scotland once again invaded the north of England. The Scots were famously routed in North Yorkshire at the Battle of Standard on the 22nd of August. But somehow, Stephen managed to fudge the peace negotiations, handing over Newcastle and Northumbria to the Scots. 
Scott. Just because Stephen had found support for his coronation didn't mean everyone supported him. Some still thought his predecessor's nomination should stand, including the nominee herself. So, in 1139, Matilda landed in England with a small force of knights. She was given protection in Arundel Castle by her father's second wife, Matilda's stepmother, Adeliza. Stephen moved his forces to Arundel and had a chance to put an end to Matilda's plans once and for all. Chivalry prevented him from using violence against a woman. Instead, he allowed Matilda to escape and she made her way to Bristol. There, she met up with her powerful half-brother Robert, the Earl of Gloucester, one of Henry I's many illegitimate children, and the two began a military campaign to claim the crown. Apparently unhindered by King Stephen, they forced much of the southwest and the Welsh marshes to submit to them. Within four years of Stephen's coronation, England was effectively divided into two kingdoms. Keen to win allies for his cause, Stephen acted. The king won over the powerful Earl Ranulph of Chester, whose territory stood on the border between England's two kingdoms, by gifting him land in central England. Unsurprisingly, those who lost the land as a result of this gift, Stephen's existing loyal supporters, were extremely unhappy. Suddenly, desperate to keep everyone happy, Stephen reversed his decision and took the land back off Ranulph. This made matters even worse than they'd been. Ranulph, having been given a generous gift only to have it snatched away, joined forces with Robert of Gloucester and Matilda in retaliation. Things were bad in Normandy too, where Matilda's husband, Geoffrey Plantagenet, had been routing Stephen's supporters. So much so, that by 1144, he had himself declared the Duke there, and the situation was about to get much worse. In the early part of 1141, a huge army marched towards Lincoln to meet Stephen's forces. Though the king himself led the charge, his army soon decided the situation was hopeless, and they ran away. Stephen bravely fought on, picking up a battle axe when his sword finally broke apart after heavy thrashing. Finally, a rival soldier picked up a heavy stone, donked the king on the head, and knocked him out. Stephen was captured, presented to Matilda, and imprisoned in Bristol Castle. Initially, he was allowed to keep his dignity, but after trying to escape, he was placed in chains. Stephen was done for, and he knew it. Admitting defeat, he released the initially hesitant clergy and nobles from their oath of fealty to him as king. That Easter, the clergy gathered at Winchester and declared Matilda Lady of England. Matilda started making preparations for her coronation as Queen of England. So what went wrong? Why is Matilda missing from our timeline of English kings and queens? King Stephen may have hit rock bottom, but he still had friends, and most importantly, luck. When Matilda showed up in London for her coronation, for instance, the citizens there rose up and chased her away. In addition, Stephen's wife, also called Matilda, was a force to be reckoned with. She rallied his friends and gathered together an army of loyal supporters. Then, in Winchester, in September 11. 41, the two Matildas went head to head. The Empress Matilda's forces were overwhelmed, and Robert of Gloucester himself was taken prisoner. Both sides now had a high-profile prisoner under lock and key, and so they settled on the next logical step. Robert was returned to the Empress, and Stephen was released to his wife in the kingdom. Throughout 1142, Stephen led his forces around England, attacking the Empress's castles before surrounding her at Oxford. Matilda slipped away, crossing the iced over River Isis on foot. The war dragged on for the next few years, with each side gaining and losing advantage respectively, and the country itself had suffered from the war, a period named by Victorian historians as the Anarchy. The centralised coinage system had been shattered, violence seemed to be everywhere, and Stephen was running low on funds. By 1147, one of the central figures of the conflict, Robert of Gloucester died, and the following year, the Empress Matilda finally left England for Normandy. Aside from a couple of failed attempts to invade by Matilda's son Henry Fitz Empress, later King Henry II, the war with Matilda seemed to be over for now. Stephen had survived. His focus now shifted to his successor, his eldest son, Eustace. Stephen wanted his son crowned king while he was still alive, as was the custom in France. The only trouble was that during these years, he fell out with the only man who could crown an English king, Theobald, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Theobald refused to carry out Eustace's coronation. Stephen imprisoned the Archbishop, who eventually escaped to Flanders. In 1153, Henry Fitz Empress once again brought an army to England, and the war seemed to be reignited. Stephen gathered up his forces, and the two armies met on opposite banks of the Thames at Wallingford in Oxfordshire. Perhaps worn down by the years of war that had already taken place, the two sides broke at a truce. Stephen and Henry held private talks about ending the war. Having been excluded from the talks, Eustace was furious, and set about gathering his own forces. However, in August, Eustace died suddenly. Stephen and Henry's talks concluded with the Treaty of Wallingford, under the terms of which Stephen would be allowed to keep the throne until his death, but he would be succeeded by Henry. In 1154, Stephen fell ill and died. He was buried at Favisham Abbey.
In our next video, we'll take a closer look at Henry Fitz Empress, or Henry II as he was styled, who was King of England for 35 years until his death in 1189. If you've enjoyed this video, you can hit the subscribe button below to receive an alert when we upload our next one. You can also help us to keep making these videos by sponsoring us on Patreon using the link below.